Welcome back to SOS. I'm Stas Arm Badass. Tonight, tonight, tonight. Ah, ah. I should have let that song keep playing. All right. I'm back to the inch bag videos again. We are going to do miscellaneous today. Uh, we've got coming up um, maps, communications, and that's something else that's coming. And because we got to do a comms video, I'm going to do mix that up together and we've got shelters and stuff right uh, so we've got a couple other videos left to do to finish this up before we announce the winner of the inch bag challenge right now the contenders the people that are runner-ups that are still in the fight we've got the stealth survivalist been out of shape go check been out of shape out he's pretty cool and uh, p701 and survival comms now uh, three of those I've already announced before and a new contender is been out of shape he's in the running now so we've got those right now I'll put those links in the drop down and we're gonna continue on okay before I get started in this one item that I would love to just say is awesome now, you guys remember the fire kit video I did right well have you ever used a vacuum sealer? <laughs> yep, that's the fire kit and it's vacuum sealed. Pretty cool, right? Uh, the food, everyone suggested that I do vacuum sealing of the food and nine packages of freeze dried food. <laughs> that's that's nine. <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely not the same size, right? Nine of those, right? And then uh, one more thing. This is an entire pack of diapers. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's half a pack of diapers, okay? So, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't he wrap your mind around that? Be like, how in the heck did he get... All right, that's about half a pack of diapers. And then uh, this is a uh, package of wipes that's been condensed down. And uh, this is... Um, this is about four rolls of toilet paper right here in this one thing. All right, this is heirloom seeds. Heirloom, you can see it right there. There you go. But yeah, that's that's seeds. That's everything you need. You can start life over with that. It's not that heavy. Might as well take it with me, right? But I just wanted to share that with you guys and gals before I got going into this and uh, doing this video. I wanted to share that little piece. Now, this is more for hardware, you know, hardware type stuff, uh, gear. And, and things like that. So we're going to get into this. First up in hardware. All right. Now, one thing that you would want to carry with you, this doesn't really weigh a lot, right? You know, grams equals pounds equals pain is usually what the phrase is. So, but uh, just be careful about how much stuff you choose and look for its purpose before you go throwing it in your pack. One thing that has always helped me out is zip ties. And I've got the super large ones, right? These are really, really large ones. These are the biggest you can get. And uh, these were purchased at Lowe's. These are not cheap. These are not the cheap ones. Don't get cheap zip ties to do any type of task. Get real zip ties. And what I mean, this is like T&B right here. This is company T&B. These are the real zip ties. These are not... Your El Cheapo zip ties. These are not something that you buy at the dollar store. Don't do not do that if you're going to run. If you're going to carry the weight of the zip ties, get zip ties that work. Okay, I'm going to throw that out there. But there's multiple uses for these things. Tying up gear and things like that. I don't get too far in zip ties. They're zip ties, people. But get good ones. Don't get cheap ones. Uh, two books that I always carry with me. You guys have heard me talk about it on the show before. I don't want to rant too much into it because uh, even with the Survival Bag series, I mentioned these books. These are my favorites. These are my little references. I even keep notes in this book. I've read this thing front and back a million times. And this book, I think I just about memorized most of the plants in this book. But I still bring it with me in case I have to task somebody else with gathering up wild edibles. I don't want to be the only one doing that job. Now, it doesn't have every single uh, plant style. That's one thing to keep in mind when you're looking up wild edibles. This has all your traps, snares, all that good stuff, right? A lot of good stuff in here. And uh, different different methods of getting water and things like that. It's a great book. 
I can't memorize everything though. That's part of my problem, but I still carry this with me. Most of the stuff that I do know offhand is useful, but you know, if I if I didn't have this book, I would still survive. I'm just saying I could use this as a fire starter. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but the thing is that I still use this book, right? And uh, somebody else will get some use out of it if they need it. Wild edibles, on the other hand, there's a problem with this wild edibles. Wild edibles. Blah, 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 blah. This book and others. Okay, I've got another one up here on the shelf that I keep in my library, my prepper library, and it is a large, large medical and wild edibles book. It, there's no way you're going to take that with you, but. You learn what you can, and you go on adventure hikes throughout the day. If you've got time, when you're hiking around on a trail, you bring that large book with you just for when you're not in a survival scenario and learn a little bit more and make your own notes. Carry a notebook. Write the stuff down. Keep notes. Keep the note. That's another item I'm not adding to my miscellaneous because that's going to go in my other video. But the notes. You need the notes, and you're going to need to take notes. Uh, but there's parts of a plant like uh, with wild edibles. I don't want to make this too far into wild edibles, but one thing you need to know is it's not going to show you every phase of the plant. When a plant's not in bloom, like if you're looking at, you're trying to find ginseng, for example. We have ginseng all around here. Now I'm going out to try and find ginseng. I know what it looks like before it becomes fully grown, and I know what it looks like when it's fully grown. Now, this book will show you what it looks like fully grown. So you won't know if you have ginseng or not, because this, this book only shows you it fully grown. So you might walk right by it if it's not fully bloomed. You know what I mean? That's just something to keep in mind. It's not going to show you every face, but it will show you it when it's completely grown. That's the problem with that book, is it shows full-grown plants, not, uh, not plants before they're you know in that time. Which is important. You kind of need to know both. But it doesn't show you all the steps of the plant. Alright. Enough ranting about that. Alright. So. One thing that I always carry with me. You've heard me say before. Bandana. You can filter water with this. There's so many millions of uses for a bandana. And uh, you can also use it for a tourniquet. There's so many different things you can use a bandana for. But I always carry one with me. Always. But I don't store it in my water kit. I store it in my miscellaneous. Alright. Electrical tape. I don't need to say anything about electrical tape. You know what it's used for. Lots of stuff. Uh, one thing that I do carry, instead of carrying a giant roll of duct tape, I don't like duct tape because of the gray. And I don't like, you know, there's duct tape out there. It's black, I get it. And camo and all this other stuff. But the weight of duct tape, the size of duct tape, it just takes up too much room. I like the Gorilla Tape. The, the to-go handy one roll is because, look at that. There's a big difference. See what I mean? And I can pack that up. And I can make repairs to my gear and all kinds of trash with this. The Gorilla Tape is, if you ever played around with Gorilla Tape, this stuff, once it's on there, it's on there. And it's, pro it's almost impossible to take it off. All right. Just keep that in mind. Now, like I said, Gorilla Tape. Now, I carry a flask. I'm not going to tell you what I'm putting in it. It's something special. All right, that's for when all is lost, and uh, I've got to make a sheet for this so I can hang it off my gear. That's the other thing I got to do. Sharpening stone, I'm going to take it out of the package because it doesn't need it. But the thing is, with sharpening stone, you need one, and you need to have a good one. This one has a fine, and uh, there's a there's a coarse, and there's a fine uh, for sharpening all sorts of blades. Sharpening a blade with a stone. You can hold the knife. The easiest way to do it is to hold the knife and and do it in a motion like this. Okay, it's like polishing. Okay, that will that will buff out any any jacked up blades you've got out there pretty quick. And most people will think that hey, look, I need to hold it like this. I need to rake it down the side. You can do that. It's it's not going to be as effective all the time. That's the reason why usually I do it like this, but. One, there's a round stone out there. It's like this. It's a round stone. But this isn't a stone. I got it. But there's a stone out there that's round that is made of the same material. There's a coarse and a fine. And all you do is, I can't remember the name of the company, but I'm sure someone's going to say something. But uh, you basically hold the blade and you do this number, a polishing motion, and then flip it over. And there you go. You can finish the job. 
because you've got a coarse to get out all the rough edges and then you got your fine to polish it up and finish it off. One thing to keep in mind, that's just, you could get the round version of it or you can go like me. I'm trying to save on weight, but I still want to be able to sharpen my tools. So there I go. I've got something I can use. Uh, it's like a buck, okay? Get yourself a sharpening stone. Your knives are no good when they're dull. It's just like a gun with no bullets, right? All right. Fishing kit. I'm keeping this real simple. Uh, I do carry trot line with me, and but the trot line is also, I split it up. You can see that it comes apart. I actually unravel this stuff, and I use it to make a... Uh, uh, makeshift bushcraft style shelters that's usually what I use this for and I keep this on my spool tool these are uh, fishing yo-yos what these do a lot of people don't know this I gotta show them see how it locks like that all right this ties to a tree like this you see that and then a fish comes along and bites and it does that all right and it yanks and hooks them uh, pretty good Fishing yo-yos, these work great. Or you can practice fishing snares. I have a video on fishing snares, on how to do it. And you basically use a stick and some string and a hook and you're done. But you could do stick string, uh, a tree limb, or there's uh, there's other techniques for it where you, you don't need to use an actual tree limb. You can actually take a piece of a limb, jab it into the ground, run a stick from here to here, and then pull that thing tight and then latch it onto a L-shaped stick and then when there's a slight yank it'll pop to and do the same thing as this. So you don't need a tree to use a fishing snare like I've shown. You you could use a, just a stick in the ground and it does the same thing. But I'll show that in another video. Fishing yo-yos if you don't want to do all that, right? But you only get two. Uh, if you know how to make fishing snares, you could do a hundred. Like, I can do a hundred fishing snares in no time flat. But, um, it's just something to know. Uh, multiple hooks, as you can see. This is a cork from a wine bottle. There's, uh, lead weights here. Fishing lines wrapped around it. And all of my hooks are right there. So, it stays nice and neat in there. Uh, one more item. Now, this is household twine. This is just for outdoor use. And there's a hundred and fifty feet of it. It cost me less than a buck, I think, but this stuff is amazing, and it already has the appearance of appearance of coyote brown, so it's going to blend in if I need to hide this. And the reason why I keep stuff like this is for this, something like this, or perimeter security. This is just a head from a grenade, and uh, the way this thing works, this pops open in here. I knew I was going to have to do this. But this pops open, just in case somebody didn't watch the video. I always got to do this. But this pops open like this. You put a shotgun primer. There's your shotgun primers. That's what they look like. Just throw them all over the place. No big deal. But yeah, I'm not going to be carrying this whole box. I'm just going to carry a few shotgun primers. I, I don't need the whole box. But these are Chichette primers. These are the 209 and they go right here and you recess this back all the way back put your pin back in place I've got a video showing how this works but you put your trip wire on this this gets tacked into a tree and they trip boom they pull it boom and it hits the primer it makes a loud explosion everyone knows someone's there and uh, you grab your guns and do your work alright anyways I'll pick those up in a minute so, paracord. Get yourself at least 100 feet of paracord. It's always good to at least have paracord. If you're not going to run, this is, I mean, this is real 550 pound cord. And this will do work. This will do heavy lifting. You can uh, uh, build multiple things from it. Tie up gear, tie up people, whatever you need to do with it. But uh, you can also break it down into the smaller twines that are in there. Seven strand. You can also break that down and you'll have... Uh, basically like this version of trot line right here if you rip all that out a lot of people already know that and I'm just saying it just in case somebody doesn't know gloves when I'm working with all this line and stuff over here doing all this hard work I want gloves these are pig gloves and uh, this is just a pair of decent gloves you can still feel when you wear these uh, you're, you're, there's a sensitivity in there to touch 
so that you can actually still feel while you're working but you're not going to get a bunch of scratches and scars all over you and you're still wearing some gloves all right one more cool item now i'm going to get into uh a pet bug out bag type stuff you know harnesses and things like that i've got a harness for our dog and we also have pouches for him and things like that i'm going to get into what i pack for him and i'm going to do a video on that and uh, but this is one of the items that was used for him and uh this was given to me by uh, Guns McPew Pew. He gave this to me on a trip one time. We were catching rain. And uh, he put this down on the ground around our area. And uh, we had a few of these. And they were lightweight and they just went in our bags. But we use this stuff stuff inside of it. And then we close it up and we use this to carry stuff. But when we get to our camp, we'll lay this out. We know it's going to rain. And we catch all the rainwater that we can. This is basically it, it, the water doesn't leak out of here. It catches it catches rain, and uh, but this is also used for a uh, a dog bowl or it can be used as a uh, you know their water bowl you know for their feed or for their food or for their water. But this is uh, you can find this at Petco or all these other places out there for pets. Weapon cleaning kit. This uh, I've got this set up so it can clean anywhere from 50 to like that's 50 cal to. Uh, um, just in case I'm stuck with a muzzle loader, I don't know, or a, a Desert Eagle or a Smith and Wesson 500, I don't know. But uh, I've got this set up for 50 cal all the way down to 22, and uh, all the pieces are in here. I like this little kit. All your stuff's in there. I've even got uh, one more thing. I wasn't going to put this with weapons. I was going to do this separate because this kind of goes into mis miscellaneous stuff. Uh, these are their silicone gun real cloth and this stuff works great for polishing something up real quick and it's already it's already lubricated uh, I've got a bunch more in here but these are all gun wipes these gun wipes work great if you've got to clean something up if you're if you're in a post apocalyptic world or whatever the case is if this is what you got this is going to be good for cleaning up a weapon real quick and uh, there's your other cleaning cleaning tools in there and got my pipe cleaners in there too and um, this is uh, for your feeder uh, for your uh, magazine feeds for an M16 or AR10 or AR15 whatever it is or AR15 as you were but uh, I use this for my rifle that I'm going to be taking with me on this little adventure and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show that in my weapons video but uh, I've got this already on here just in case I need it but if I don't I always like it because he looks like a little tiki man I like staring at him. He makes me smile. He's kind of like Wilson. Anyway, that's my Wilson. All right. All right. Now these clips, these are just made out of polymer, and but they are the most awesome. I got these while I was in the Marine Corps, and it came with a Camelback that I had. And uh, ever since, for some reason, I I got stuck with these because they don't want their Camelbacks back when you are done with them, I guess. But uh, anyway. So I've got these clips, and I still use them to this day for all kinds of gear. Uh, I basically, I, I attach these to my pack, and uh, you can attach multiple things to it. For example, like this. This runs right through here, just like that. You can bring this up, and then boom. And see, it connects onto your pack right here in your Molly gear. So, boom, just like that. Now, but you can hang more than just this, right? You know, there's multiple things you can use it for. But it's just, it's something else I want to share with you in my miscellaneous. But just in case, like, some people would think, you know, hey, well, you know, a slingshot or this would be considered miscellaneous or that would be considered miscellaneous. I break the videos in the order that is actually written out in my my cards. And uh, this is part of miscellaneous. Now, uh, one item that I didn't show in miscellaneous is like a whistle or something like that. Those go <laughs> items like that are broke down into like when someone says miscellaneous, they would think something like that. But miscellaneous, if if you've got a whistle that goes with communication, right? So you, <laughs> that's a communications tool. So uh, when you do a communications, then that's the type of stuff you put with that. Miscellaneous, this is just kind of random stuff. You know, your basic duct tape, zip ties, paracord, things like that. Those are items for constructing things, building things, fixing things, repairing stuff. And one more item that I did add to the pack already, but it's installed in my first aid, was Gorilla Super Glue. 
Now you could add this to your miscellaneous kit, but I've already added it to my first aid kit, and I'm, I've mentioned that before. But I do keep super glue, and it's in my first aid kit. But a lot of people don't think about that, right? You know, but I put it in the order that fits here. You know what I mean? Where I know where it is. And uh, miscellaneous, I know what that is. That's going to be my duct tape and my zip ties and my, my cordage, right? So, and then a book, right? That's kind of how I do it, all right? So you can do it however you choose, you know? <laughs> no one's telling you what to do. You do what you want to do. You, nobody's the boss of me. It's okay. It's okay. All right. Uh, you're watching SOS. I'm Stas Bass. Have a beautiful, fabulous, fantastic rainbow unicorn day. And take it easy.